it's Jen, and that is Love Actually. I actually love that movie. <laughs> Let's get serious, okay? It's okay to be picky about who rides your boat. Pause. What does that even mean, ride your boat? Okay, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Once upon a time, I was a precious little 10 pound baby, the doctor said to my mom. Ma'am, this will be like passing a watermelon through a lemon-sized hole. Bedside manner for the win. As a little baby, I said baby things like and if you are fluent in baby speak you would know that I was actually saying hello my name is Jen and I'm here to save the earth because from a very young age I really did think I was here to like save the whole world no pressure now let's pause on top of the pause and talk about how fantastic this doodle of the earth is I mean just spot on I don't know what these extra continents are and what the little guy is down there the earth is over here like what am I and then the moon comes in and it's like you're a goddess because I love you okay let's press play on the paused pause now we're back to where I was a little kid I wanted to save the earth that's just way too much pressure to put on anyone let's get rid of that do you know who this is do you know who this is this is Oprah but did you know that there are people in the world who don't know who Oprah is and she's accomplished a lot of really great stuff I don't really know a whole lot about her but I think she's pretty great probably under the assumption that Oprah is fantastic and that a lot of people know her, we have to keep in mind that there are people who see her and say, like, I don't know, who? My point, no matter how wide of a reach we have, we're never going to reach every single person. So going with this mindset of I need to help the whole earth is really silly and I need to go ahead and get rid of it. What replaces it, poof, is this little friend. What is it? It's inspiration. Throughout my life, I had all these fun phases. This was my emo phase. It sucked. There was a lot of acne. Backstreet Boys. And then there was this phase where I got the fake boobs and I like wanted my hair to be a certain way and I thought there was this certain way to be beautiful. Blah, 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 blah. And then I got the fake boobies ripped out and I shaved my head and these are my monster slippers, which is way more authentically me. Throughout this time, I had multiple interests and they were all seemingly unrelated. But I did my best to follow them because if I didn't, I was pretty miserable. Wait, let me scooch my face out of the way so you can see. Look, it's a keyboard! Which pretty much led me to be totally overwhelmed. Let me scooch my face out of the way. Wow, wee, here we go. I kind of wanted to go, whoa, but that would be too much. No, it wouldn't. Let's do it. Whoa! Okay, we're down here now. So it led me to be super overwhelmed because I had all these seemingly unrelated passions. Whoa! I felt scattered. And it doesn't help that you read all these books that are like, only focus on one thing, otherwise you will fail. And they're written by super successful people, so they obviously have to know what they're talking about. And clearly their way of doing it is the way to do it. And I tried to get myself to only focus on one thing, but it made me miserable. Throughout my life, I had the different passions and all these different things seemed unrelated. But then I found out, oh my God, they all built a boat. I was having this amazing meditation one day and I saw like this wheel and I saw this like quilt and I saw this wood and it all seemed unrelated. I'm like, what the heck am I looking at? And even the quilt itself was made from different squares of my life. And then out of the fog, I realized I was riding a boat, my own beautiful sailboat created by my inspiration and my passions. I'm on a boat, mother. Let's focus, let's stay focused. Okay, this is very serious. All right, so now we can go ahead and press play to the original thing. It is okay to be picky about who rides your boat. We all have our own unique inspiration, our own individual expression of weirdness. And trust me, it can get really weird. There are times that I really feel like I'm taking crazy pills because I get these ideas and I'm like, that is bizarre. But bizarre ideas are good. Without bizarre ideas, this wouldn't have been created. They were like, I love the galaxy and I love grilled cheese sandwiches. So like, what if? <gasps> So we got a boat. This is my sailboat. These are my awesome doodle skills. You're going to run into lots of different people throughout your boating journey. Let's talk about this person first. It's a person who's in the water and might be like, oh, help, or like, I'm drowning, or whatever it is. And typically these people are stuck in victimhood. Oh, poor me. Like, <laughs> I know because I've been there. They want an easy fix without doing the work. They want you to pull them on board your badass ship that you've spent your whole life building as you've done this really hard work. And they just want to kind of like ride along. Or they have a lot of excuses where they're like, oh, I mean, like I would do what you're doing, but here are all the reasons that I can't. Overall, we can say that this person is not ready. Oh, darn it, need to move my face again. Oh, they're not ready to do the work. They're not ready to dig deep emotionally, they're not ready to push past their patterns, whatever it is, they don't want to do the hard work, they just want to sit and complain. 
Again, I know this because I've been there, and sometimes I take another little trip to victimhood, and it's a lot of fun. It's cozy to sit in your own warm shit. That rhymed. Occasionally, you'll throw a lifeline out to these people, and you bring them on board, and they're like, wow, thanks, I'm ready to do the work. I will now be super supportive of you, and I'm going to build my own boat based on what you teach me. It's really rare that that happens, but I'd like to hope that it does happen, okay? Use your discernment with these people. Trust your gut. Can you just imagine that there's a T behind my face? Ooh, eh, T. If you are interacting with someone and throwing your lifelines out to lots of people and you feel drained and exhausted, I've had it happen where I've shared lots with the world and then I wanna help every single person that reaches out to me. And then I feel exhausted and I get off of social media for three months. So if you find yourself feeling drained, it's likely that uh, you're not using your best judgment and perhaps you're trying to manage too many people's lives and make it too easy for them. When realistically, we need to allow people to learn to swim, to learn to build their own boat with their own individual weirdness, you know what I mean? One of the best things we can do is continue riding along on our own unique weird sailboat. Oh yeah, then there's also going to be pirates which are just like asshats that come along and want to blow up your shit. But the good news is you're going to have friends. And maybe if you don't have friends yet, you got a dog or a therapist, which is a friend that you pay. Here's what you're really looking for with these folks who you're gonna let ride on your boat. They believe in you. They're genuinely supportive, not like fake supportive where they're like, oh, whenever you're famous, like, can you go ahead and get me famous too? They support you. They want you to succeed, actually. That excites them. They have their own interests. This is a big important thing because they don't make their whole life about you. They're along for the ride, but they have their own life and they take responsibility for their stuff. I think for me personally, being a supporter to one of my friends. There's sometimes that I've been jealous and I have to call myself on it. The best supporters are the ones that believe in you. They're genuinely supportive. They want you to succeed. They have their own life and they take responsibility for their stuff. Those people, we'll let them on board, right? It's rare to find them. Go ahead and, you know, tie them up, <laughs> put them down in the, is it called a hole? I should have learned more about boats before using this analogy. Moving on. If we continue on with the analogy, there are other things like we've got a shark fin. We have other people on their boats. We've got Kate and Leo here. That's the Titanic. I bet you recognized it. I'm sorry for belittling your intelligence. Those folks are just kind of going on their own journey. Like, hey, what's up? Good job. And sometimes you like stop off at a little island and you talk and you share your journey. And then occasionally you might have like a really magical merman hop up. The way that I imagine this in real life is some miraculous interaction with a person that is magical and they give you some yummy piece of advice or an amazing opportunity that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, sometimes you're gonna run into a mystical merman, okay? Okay, here we go. Now, for the most part, here are the people that you're really gonna run into. The people that are watching you behind a screen. You right now are that person watching me behind a screen. Whoa. This is getting very meta. You are going to get all kinds of feedback, no matter what. Some folks will think that you are fantastic and it feels great. Sometimes it can actually be a little addictive, honestly. I've had to work really hard to divorce myself from wanting to create things just so people will like them, you know? Others will be pissed or annoyed by your general existence. With these folks, no matter how much you try to like tiptoe through whatever you're sharing, you're still gonna piss them off, okay? So you might as well just be you, be authentic. Use your best judgment, check your motives, don't be an asshole for the sake of being an asshole, but recognize that even if you try to be perfect, you'll still piss someone off. And then there are these people who just like won't care, they're indifferent. Overall, they're all opinions, whether it's the kind things or the mean things or the indifferent things. But realistically, it's not a reflection of us individually as creators. These are just opinions. There's also other stuff like algorithms and whatnot that I don't really understand. I don't care to understand. Maybe one day I'll want to understand, but right now it's not a part of my boat. Okay. Okay. All right. So these are all opinions and you get to choose which ones you take on board. I remember when I wrote my first book and I, I, I published it, I did a self-publishing thing. And at first I just had like, a lot of my friends and stuff go and leave five star reviews. Randomly, some other person found the book and they left a two star review and they said some negative stuff. They said that the book made them feel anxious or something because of the stream of consciousness writing in it. I looked up how to unpublish a book. I wanted to delete it. I thought I was harming people based on this one person's feedback. But you know what? That's how it impacted them. That's not up to me. 
you get to choose which opinions you take on board, you get to choose what feedback you take on board, you get to choose which people you take on board. Let's go over what we've learned. It's not our individual responsibility to save the whole world. It's impossible. Next, we all have our own unique voice and inspiration. So it's our responsibility to follow that inspiration, not our responsibility to save the whole world. It is our responsibility to follow that yummy little voice inside that says, ooh, this lights me up. Ooh, that's fun. Ooh, that's exciting. We follow that. Oh man, this darn thing. Whoa. It's okay to have multiple interests. Follow what inspires you, and you'll find that seemingly unrelated things connect to form something amazing, even if other people think it's weird, and a lot of times that'll happen. And even if it seems totally disconnected, just keep trusting that yummy little spark of inspiration inside. It knows what it's doing. People will judge us no matter how hard we try to avoid it. It's better to be judged for being who we are authentically than to hide who we are in an effort to avoid criticism. because. Criticism happens either way, and we might as well enjoy the freedom of being ourselves. That in it of itself has given me this sense of confidence, of having a spine, of getting thicker skin while also still being this open, vulnerable, sensitive person. I'm able to stand up taller and not get knocked over by people saying dumb stuff or mean stuff. I'm able to be like, you know, I don't really agree with that. Or sometimes feedback that hurts my feelings is actually true and I can take responsibility for something if I maybe didn't say something right. Or I can go, you know, I'm going to do better in the next video or the next painting or whatever. It is okay to get your feelings hurt. This is a big one for me. It has been a big one for me because I thought anytime I got feedback that was ouchy and I fell into a deep dark pit of despair because I did quite a few times. I had this narrative playing that I wasn't cut out for this, which was messed up because my seed of inspiration and all those little yummy fires of inspiration in my belly told me otherwise. But then I got my feelings hurt. So I was like, oh, I'm not cut out for an audience. No, I am, but I'm also a sensitive human. And so I'm gonna get my feelings hurt and that's okay. Feel the feelings then come back even stronger. All right, just don't quit because there have been so many times in the past where I would start sharing videos, sharing content, really opening myself up to the world and gaining traction, getting followers, things are happening. And then something would happen where I'd either get negative feedback, a thumbs down, or someone saying something really, really positive that felt like a whole bunch of pressure. And then I would just be like, bye, oh, I gotta go. Don't quit. If you need to express, express. If you have something that hurts your feelings, take the time to feel the feelings, wait till you get your courage back up, come back even stronger. It's okay to be picky about who and what you take with you on your journey. You get to pick, use your best judgment. So go be weird, be you, follow your inspiration. And I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise, even though there are gonna be downs and ups and in-betweens, it will all come together. And suddenly it'll start making sense. We were like, oh my gosh, that weird passion that I had in seventh grade is now making sense. And it really all comes together as a boat or it could be like a rocket ship or a roller skate. I don't know, whatever is your thing, follow your inspiration and use your hands a lot if you want to. Okay, I'm gonna go finish watching Love Actually. Oh, and this is the part where I tell you to subscribe. I don't know where it is. I don't know how this works. Subscribe, where is it? It's somewhere. Share this with your friends, etc., etc., etc. Bye.